Shortland. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I'm pleased to make a contribution on the appropriations bills. And first, I'd like to talk about Medicare and the centrality of Medicare and bulk billing to Australia. The health of all Australians must be our number one priority, and the health of my community in Shortland is being threatened by changes to Medicare that came into effect last month. On January 1 this year, the Morrison government cut bulk billing incentives to doctors in the Hunter region and 13 other regions throughout Australia, making it harder for doctors to bulk bill, even those who need it the most. Notices have gone up in doctor surgery saying they will no longer be able to bulk bill, and others have put up their fees. I have been inundated with calls from people telling me how worried they are, and with good reason. I don't blame the doctors for this, Mr Deputy Speaker. This cut is simply the latest in a long list of cuts to Medicare by Liberal governments. The electorate of Shortland already has low bulk billing rates. Fewer than 60 per cent of people are routinely bulk billed, meaning two in five people in Shortland have to pay every time they see the doctor. Let me repeat that, Mr Deputy Speaker. Two in five people in Shortland already have to pay to see the doctor. And when they do pay, they are $37 on average out of pocket for every visit, an increase of 38 per cent since 2013. That's well in excess of inflation. And for specialist visits, it's even worse. Fewer than one in five people are routinely bulk billed to see specialists in Shortland, meaning four out of five people are out of pocket to the tune of, on average, $80 every visit. This cut to Medicare bulk billing incentives will only make matters worse. Unfortunately, the Lower Hunter combines some of the lowest bulk billing rates with some of the highest rates of disadvantage in the nation. Windale and Mount Hutton are among the most disadvantaged communities in Australia with particularly high levels of children living in poverty. People living in these communities cannot afford to pay to see the doctor. Others who already pay to see the doctor cannot afford to pay more. When people can't afford to go to the doctor, they do one of two things. They either stay at home and put up with whatever is ailing them, making things worse in the long run, or they go to hospital and we all know how busy and overstretched emergency rooms are. This does not even make economic sense, as it costs far more for our health services to treat a very sick person in an emergency than to treat a sick person in a doctor's surgery. And we saw evidence to a Senate committee uh, during the Medicare, uh, the GP tax debate, which found that if only one in 50 people who had were deterred from seeing a doctor because of the GP tax, then presented to the emergency department, the entire savings from the GP tax will be wiped out. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I have no doubt that this is what will occur again now. People will not go to a doctor because of the cost increases brought on by this government. They will get sicker and they will have no choice but to present to the ED ward at the Belmont Hospital or the John Hunter, and that will cost the taxpayers of Australia much, much more, and it imperils the health of those individuals. And people are raising their concerns with me daily. For example, David from Caves Beach rang my office furious that his GP at Blacksmiths will no longer be bulk billing he and his wife. The practice will now only bulk bill people over 70. David is a self-funded retiree who has a health care card. Previously, he and his wife were bulk billed, and it is now going to cost them $65 to visit the doctor. And they go at least three times a month, Mr Deputy Speaker. It will have a huge impact on their budget. It's something those opposite haven't considered despite all their professed love for self-funded retirees. Gordon Rank to say the skin cancer clinic he attends at Belmont will no longer bulk bill for surgical procedures. He is about to have a procedure for which he was bulk billed last year, but this year he will be out of pocket a staggering $250. It's not a major procedure, he says, but it is necessary and it is a lot of money. These are just two of the many examples of hardship. I've been running a petition for my constituents to sign and they've been been able to provide insightful feedback which clearly identifies the importance of bulk billing and how much Australians care about universal health care. Peter from Jules wrote, if you have an ongoing health problem, it becomes a huge problem if you have to go to your doctor and he no longer bulk bills. If you cannot afford to go to your own doctor, you decide to go to the hospital, you are told that you should have gone to your own doctor because the hospital is already overloaded. And Joan has a very clear call to the government. It is bad policy to undermine the public health system in favour of demonstrably far less efficient privatisation of health services. With the current government's policy settings, we are heading down the path of the US, which has the most inefficient and expensive health care system in the world. 
Cutting back Medicare for doctors after a decade-long freeze will sound the death knell of public health in this country. Please don't do it. And that was Joan. These are just a few of the hundreds of comments I have received from my constituents outraged at the recent changes. I have written three times to the Health Minister and I am asking him again today, please restore the bulk billing incentives to doctors in the Hunter. The health of our community depends upon it. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is also a good opportunity to provide an update on community groups I have been catching up with in Shortland. Supporting community groups in my electorate is one of the greatest and most pleasurable parts of my job. And I'm very, I've been very pleased to be able to grant more than $423,000 to 31 organisations in Shortland in three recent rounds. Under round five of the Shortland Stronger Communities program, 14 organisations have shared in $150,000, grants that they will match with their own financial or in-kind contributions. Under the Shortland Communities Environment program, five groups have shared in $73,000 to continue their environmental work. And I look forward to the program being refined to make it a lot more accessible if the government chooses to continue it. And under the Shortland Local Schools Community Fund, 12 schools have shared in $200,000 to improve the education and well-being of their students. The projects are interesting and varied and spread throughout the electorate, from Cardiff in the north to Buff Point in the south. Stronger communities funding will help Macquarie Care to enhance the, their amenities for homeless people living in their cars at Cardiff. Novacare Community Services to create a wellness centre for older people in Swansea, Lakes Rugby Union Club to set up a permanent canteen at their home ground Slade Park in Budgiewoy, San Remo's Men's Shed to install a dust extractor for the safer use of woodworking machines, Novacastrian Swimming Club to install an all-weather area for dry land training, socialisation and presentations, Redhead Surf Life Saving Club to fence off a secure area to store and maintain board and ski trailers. And I thank and congratulate Redhead Surf Life Saving Club for their recent part in the rescue of a couple of surfers who got into trouble in some rough conditions. Marine Rescue Lake Macquarie will purchase groundskeeping equipment to maintain their pelican base. Swansea Community Cottage to install clear weatherproof blinds at their Artea Gallery and Garden so it can be used in inclement weather. Bitterba and Gwandalan Public Schools to upgrade their playgrounds, Warners Bay Scouts to refurbish amenities in their hall, Buff Point Girl Guides to replace flooring in the hall, and Charlestown Lions Club to upgrade their catering trailer. Environmental grants went to three Central Coast land care groups for weed eradication, uh, being Budgiewoy Beach Dune Care, Budgiewoy Island Land Care, and Gwandalan Land Care. Fern Creek Land Care received funding to enhance the habitat for the threatened squirrel glider at Dudley. And Belmont Wetland State Park will continue successful dune stabilisation and regeneration on Nine Mile Beach. Local schools community fund grants went to Belmont High, which will establish a student wellbeing centre, Sapias the Tenth Primary in Windale, which will create a reconciliation cultural centre, which is incredibly important given the fact that half the students at that school are Indigenous and has got one of the lowest SES scores in the entire nation. North Lakes High. San Remo will install fitness equipment. Cardiff High and Blacksmiths Primary will upgrade technology to their school halls. Windale, Caves Beach and Charlestown East Public Schools will improve their playgrounds. Dudley Nord Dwarf Public Schools will install new bubblers and water bottle refilling stations. St Brendan's Catholic Primary School Lake Memorial will develop a play area and sensory garden for students with disabilities. And St Francis Xavier Primary Belmont will invest in Lego educational robots for computer programming classes. And I had a great visit to SFX last week, and I look forward to coming back so the kids can teach me all about these Lego educational robots. Uh, great things are happening in schools and community organisations throughout Shortland, and I'm pleased to be able to support so many local organisations. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the time remaining, I want to talk about a, a couple of portfolio issues. Uh, as a shadow minister, for international development in the Pacific. It's, a, it's an intense privilege to develop policies to support uh, people throughout this world, because ultimately, to state the blindingly obvious, we are all humans and we all have an obligation to advance human welfare wherever we find it. And that's why it saddens me so deeply, Mr Deputy Speaker, to remind the parliament of the $11.8 billion of cuts this government has imposed on our official development assistance budget. This cut not only undermines the soft power of Australia, not only undermines our ability to influence other nations, it costs human lives. 
Mr Deputy Speaker. I don't say that lightly. These budget cuts kill people. They literally kill people, Mr Deputy Speaker. And we're seeing three things. We're seeing the budget cuts. We're seeing diversion of resources to the Pacific Step Up. And the Pacific Step Up is a worthy initiative which we support. We've got some views on how to improve it. But we support the Pacific Step Up, but it should not be resulting in a step down in everywhere else in the world. And we're also seeing extreme cuts to health and education assistance, which is, as I said, costing lives. So the impact of these cuts from the government and estimate uh, Senate figures came out uh, to uh, highlight the figures uh, is uh, a cut in our official development assistance to Southeast Asia of 30 per cent, cuts to assistance to South Asia of 42 per cent, cuts to assistance to Africa of 49 per cent, cuts to Latin America assistance of 85 per cent, and cuts to multilateral organisations of 25 per cent, Mr Deputy Speaker. And this is having an extreme impact. This is hurting people, this is costing lives, and it's actually impacting on national security. For example, by the end of this year, we will not provide a cent of bilateral assistance to Pakistan, the centre of Islamic extremism in the world. So this is a very short-sighted approach. And the cuts are hurting nearer to home. For example, we had a visit by the President of Indonesia a couple of weeks ago, and it would have been useful to highlight during that visit, for example, that Australia has cut its overseas development assistance to Indonesia in half, in half, Mr Deputy Speaker. The cuts to health assistance to Indonesia were a massive 86 per cent, and cuts to education of 57 per cent. Very, very significant, Mr Deputy Speaker. We've cut assistance to Vietnam in half, and this government has cut assistance to the Philippines, Laos and Cambodia by a third. And as tragically, um, We've cut assistance to the poorest country in the entire world, Timor-Leste, by 10 per cent in the, in the period to 2018. It is disgraceful, uh, Member for Macquarie. It is a damning indictment on this government that its policies are causing so much human misery, not just in Australia, but throughout the world. So it cuts across all educational assistance were 41 per cent and health 32 per cent. And even within the Pacific region, a region that this government tries and claims to focus on, we've seen significant cuts to individual nations. For example, assistance to Vanuatu has been cut by 42 per cent, assistance to Samoa cut by 14 per cent. And incredibly, Mr Deputy Speaker, health assistance to Samoa has been cut by 36 per cent. In the aftermath of a tragic and deadly measles epidemic, this government is cutting health assistance to Samoa by 36 per cent. We saw cuts to uh, assistance to Tonga of 10 per cent, Cook Islands 26 per cent, Tuvalu 17 per cent, Kiribati 9.5 per cent and Fiji 5.3 per cent. This is a government who is intent on destroying the overseas development assistance budget, which is incredibly short-sighted. Not only is it hurting and killing fellow human beings, it is hurting our soft power ability throughout the globe. Uh, quickly on defence procurement, which is one of my other responsibilities in the opposition, this government continues to preside over a massive mess in defence procurement. 36 projects are running cumulatively 74 years late. That's right, Mr Deputy Speaker. 36 projects have been so mismanaged by this government that they are 74 years late, and they are $10.3 billion over budget. And the latest report from Defence has found problems with the Jindalee Operational Radar Network JORN, deployable defence air traffic management and control systems, battlefield command systems, MH90 supply issues, problems with the Hawkeye, problems with the pilot training system, an additional two-year delay to satellites, a three-and-a-half-year delay to commando special operations vehicles and a one-and-a-half-year delay to Hercules upgrade. 36 projects delayed 74 years with a budget blowout of $10 billion. So this means that our uh, troops in the ADF aren't getting the equipment they need when they need it, and that's a damning indictment on this government. So in conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, I'll be focused with my Labor colleagues throughout this year on holding this government to account, to fighting for the best outcome for all Australians, and I'll be particularly focused on fighting for outcomes in Shortland, a, a beautiful place to live an area that um, continues to struggle under budget cuts from Commonwealth and state governments. Uh, but I do commend this bill to the House.